Hey, Liam Ward here at LearnTheHarmonica.com. In this video, I'm going to help you to understand modes. I'm going to try to demystify them for you and also clear up some confusion about the relationship between modes and positions on the harmonica. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a clearer understanding of what both of those things are and how you can use them in your playing. Don't worry about taking notes or anything because there is a free summary of this lesson which you can find via the link in the description below. I also have a step-by-step -step course all about positions and modes, so if you'd like to take that premium course, then there's a link to that as well. So what is a mode? Well, the easiest way to think of it is as a type of scale, but it predates our modern major and minor scales. They're still used, but at one point they were the dominant way of building melodies in music. These days they're a little bit more niche, but they can still be used really nicely and they're quite a good way of exploring the harmonica specifically as well. So your next question might be, what's a scale? Well, a scale is a set of notes built using a formula of intervals. So intervals are the gaps between notes. So if you choose a certain uh, distance between each note, you'll build a unique scale. And you can start that scale on any note and it'll still be the same type of scale. The distances between the notes, the intervals, are talked about as half steps, semitones, or whole steps, tones. So half steps are the smallest distance, standard distance, in Western music between two notes. So imagine on a piano, two keys that are right next to each other. There's no between those two notes uh, in Western music. And then a tone or a full step, as you might guess, is two of those. So it's twice that distance. Now, if you choose a combination of half steps and whole steps between a set of notes, you can build a scale. So for example, the major scale, which you'll be familiar with if I play it on a C harmonica, That scale has the uh, formula, if you like, whole tone, whole tone, half tone, whole tone, whole tone, whole tone, half tone. So if you take any note, any of the notes in the modern Western scale, and you start with that note and build from there, so you go up a tone and then up another and up a half tone and so on, you will be building a major scale based on that root note. So they're all different types of scales just based on different formulas and there's all sorts of weird and wonderful versions of those scales. The most common and popular modern ones are the major scale we just looked at and then the minor scale, there are a few different minor scales used in modern music, but the natural minor scale is a good place to start. So I mentioned that modes are a type of scale. So what's going on in terms of the formulas to build the modes? Well, the special thing about modes is that they're basically derivative of the major scale. The seven uh, kind of classical standard modes are built from the major scale. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we take that major scale that I've just described for you, but we start on a different degree, so we don't start on that first note, that C, we actually start somewhere else on the scale. We use the same set of notes, but we're starting somewhere else. It changes that pattern that formula of intervals, and therefore it changes the character, the emotions, the, the feeling of the scale. Now, depending on which degree you start on, you'll be getting a different mode. So because there are seven notes, not including the octave, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, 
Depending on which of those notes you start on, you'll get a different mode. And they are our seven modes. Okay, so now we know what a mode is, we get to the fun bit, which is playing through each of the modes. They're really fascinating to play because they don't sit to our modern ears nicely in the same way that our modern major and minor scales do, or at least some of them are really quite odd just because of the uh, sequence of notes that we'll get. So each mode has a name which comes from the Greek, that's just the way it is, it's the traditional way of doing it, and I'll take you through each uh, mode, I'll play it for you, and I'll give you an example of a song that you might be familiar with that uses that mode. So the first mode is Ionian, and this is basically our major scale, so there's nothing of interest here really. That's just starting on the first degree of the scale, so starting on the four blow for us. So that's a scale we're familiar with and loads of tunes are built from that set of notes. Um, for example, Camptown Races, you know, uh, old folk song that is very much based on that. So nothing, nothing of interest with that mode, let's get on to the interesting stuff. So if we start on the second degree of the scale, we get Dorian mode. So immediately the character has changed somewhat. It sounds similar to minor scales that we are familiar with in modern music. Slightly different, but it does have that minor feel to it. If you want the uh, geeky theory, it's kind of like a minor scale with the sixth degree raised to semitone. So the really obvious example of Dorian that most people are familiar with is Scarborough Fair. So it's a, an old English folk song, but then Simon and Garfunkel did a version of it and it's distinctively got that Dorian feel. And that seven draw note for us is really uh, obvious, I think, as a Dorian sounding note. So if we start on the third degree of the scale, we get Phrygian. So the third degree for us is the five blow. And again, it sounds quite mournful, uh, but it's quite distinctive because the step from the first note to the second note is just a half step, a semitone. So that gives it a quite a distinctive sound from the five blow to the five draw. We're starting to get a bit more interesting here, kind of a strange ideas going on. And the song that you might be familiar with is the Doctor Who theme. Now, uh, full disclosure, some of these weirder modes, I had to start googling and finding out some stuff. A lot of the songs, modern songs that use these modes are contentious, so they don't necessarily use it for the whole song, or it's a question of interpretation because sometimes it, it's hard to say exactly where uh, the tonal centre of the song lies, but that's a good place to start. So our fourth mode is Lydian. This starts on the five draw for us. So Lydian's like the major scale, but with the fourth note raised. So it, again, that's a strange thing to our ears. It's got a certain sort of feel to it. And I believe that the theme tune for The Simpsons uses the Lydian mode, or at least some of it does. So uh, it's worth having a listen to that and see if you can hear the kind of strange things going on there. If we start on the fifth scale degree, we get Mixer Lydian. So for us, that's the six below. And Norwegian Wood by the Beatles uses the Mixolydian mode and it's quite familiar to blues players because 
it's like the major scale with the seventh degree flattened. So that's a set of notes you may be using in your blues soloing. If we start on the sixth degree of the scale, we get Aeolian. And this will probably be familiar to you because it's like a modern minor scale. It's actually the relative minor to the uh, major scale. So C major to A minor, because we're starting on that sixth draw which is our A note on the uh, C harmonica. So there are more examples of this than some of the other modes, and one uh, really common one is Losing My Religion by R.E.M., which is a beautiful song using the Aeolian. So our final mode, starting on the seventh degree, is the Locrian mode. Now, this is a weird one. It's like a minor scale but with the second degree and the fifth degree flattened, which means that it doesn't really feel like it has a home. It doesn't feel like it resolves to its uh, kind of tonal center. So it's a, it's a strange one. You don't hear much of it. So we could start on our seven draw, although that will give us a 10 blow semitone bend to finish with. So I'm gonna go down an octave because we've gone so far up going to go down. It's the same scale or same mode, just further down. So I'm going to start on the three draw. See, it sort of sounds like it's, you don't feel like you're finishing the scale there. And there are some examples of this all query examples of this in um, kind of metal music, rock music. But the one that I would say pretty confidently uses it is the Björk song Army of Me. At least it uses it in the verse, if you take into account the bass line as well as the melody. Um, really hard to find examples of this because it's so strange, it's not, it's not really pleasing to the ear. It, it's a strange um, formula or, or set of intervals that, that has been created. So it, um, yeah, it's just uh, your ears kind of go, hang on, I'm not sure I like that. Uh, but it's one of the modes, so I wanted to uh, give you all of them. I've included in the summary for this lesson all of those modes, the uh, intervals that create them, and the notes on the harmonica in order to find them as well, so hopefully that will help you. Let me know in the comments what emotions these modes evoke for you, which ones you like, which ones you don't, and maybe if you know of any other songs using modes, I'd love to hear uh, those examples from you as well. So I just want to mention briefly the difference between modes and positions on harmonica, because they're not the same thing, and this is a mistake I see all over the internet, including on Wikipedia. I know Wikipedia isn't uh, faultless, but you think that someone would correct it. And I can understand the confusion or the sort of uh, mix-up, but they're technically different things. So when we're talking about positions on harmonica, we're talking about the key of the song relative to the key of the harmonica. So when those two things are not the same thing, when you're using, for example, a C harmonica to play in G, you're playing in a certain position. In that case, second position. So it's about that relationship between the key of the harmonica and the key of the song. But the position itself doesn't determine the notes you have to play. It's probably gonna heavily suggest the kind of notes you'll want to play because certain scales will be easier or sound better than others. But since a mode is a type of scale, you can't equate the, the position and the mode because you can play all different types of scales in all different types of positions. So to say, for example, third position is the Dorian mode is not right because you can play third position your whole life and never play the Dorian mode. So it's just something that I think is important to clear up that they are different things, although if you're playing in third position at some point, you probably will end up playing the Dorian mode. So it is important to, to distinguish those things uh, for clarity and for your understanding. 
And of course, the flip side to that is that it's possible to play each mode in all different positions. It's just that certain positions will naturally give you a mode without any uh, fancy techniques. So I hope that explains a little bit about modes and how they sound on the harmonica and also a bit about the relationship with positions as well. I'm aware this is a sticky, confusing subject, especially to us theory-phobic harmonica players. So if you have any questions, do put them in the comments. I'll try and answer as best I can. I'll try and uh, catch as many of those comments as I can as well. If you'd like a summary, a free download of the uh, stuff that we've looked at in this video, then there's a link in the description. And I have a step-by-step -step premium course going through all different types of things related to positions and a bit on modes as well. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link to that as well. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you have, I'd love it if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe and click the bell, then you'll get all of my harmonica lessons, a free lesson every single week. Good luck with your practice, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.